That title is fully true. I really wish I didn't, but here we are. I was scrolling through my suggested video page and saw a familiar face, a channel called Wrangler Star. For those of you who don't know, Wrangler Star considers himself a professional homeowner. Now that being said, a lot of his videos are lifestyle tips as well as things focusing about living in the country, DIY tips, that sort of thing. And I spent a lot of my early adulthood watching Wrangler Star, also known as Cody, as I was always pretty outdoorsy myself and enjoyed that type of content. And he always espoused traditional Christian conservative sort of values on his YouTube channel, which I really admired and saw him sort of as like a parasocial role model. So when I came across his recent video, I was sort of taken aback. This video was labeled Never Trust a Cop, me being a cop that caught my attention pretty quickly. All right, Cody, tell me why I shouldn't trust myself. I don't like cops. Um, I, had a, I had an experience with a cop it was my own fault. Oh man, I hate, I, I wasn't going to admit this. Should I, should I admit what I did? I don't know, Cody, should you? <laughs> I was not demonstrating Christian character. I just, I, I was overwhelmed. We'll come back to that part about the whole Christian values thing. I'll admit it. I'll say it. This was a couple weeks. This was maybe a month ago or so. I was down in town. I was heading down to the lumber yard uh, to pick up some Sawzall blades. This is, this is a sore spot. The local city cops are the worst. And they pray they're road pirates. <laughs> so we're starting off good, the old road pirate terminology. Oh my gosh. They sit down by the highway and they prey on people. And they sit down there and all day long, all they do is just sit down there writing nitpicky little tickets. Okay, all right. So let's kind of break that down, nitpicky. What do you mean by nitpicky? Some people consider speeding tickets for 50 miles per hour the speed limit nitpicky. I need to hear some more explanation there, otherwise you're just making a baseless accusation. Also, how are you certain that the officers are writing these people tickets? Are you getting this through word of mouth? Through friends? Through family? How, how do you know that they're being written tickets, not just warnings? And they usually are picking on people that are poor. There's a lot of folks that work in, the, um, a lot of migrants here that work in the, in the, the orchards. Okay, I know we keep pausing, but this is important. Full disclosure here, in my experience, people that are poor actually generally have the opposite happen. When I pull someone over, and this is true for a majority of patrol officers that I personally know of, for, for something like a headlight out or registration or whatever, I ask them why they haven't gotten that thing taken care of. Very commonly people will reply with, I have no idea, I, I didn't see that the headlight was out or the registration to get it registered again. Like I would have to fix this really expensive thing I just don't have the money for. And, and you know what I do next? I give them a warning. It's a case by case basis, but if people have genuine excuses for why there's something wrong with their vehicle, I, I and many other officers generally just give a warning. So again, I you don't really have a lot of evidence there. You're just kind of saying what you think is happening. And you know, you don't have a lot of money. It's hard It's hard to follow all the rules and the regulations. Things are so expensive. You know, it's just difficult to do. And the, and the more difficult you have, the more the lower income you are, the more difficult it is. And I agree. I've been in that position before myself, so I understand that. These bastards... Okay. <laughs> ...sit down there and just prey upon these people, and I just despise them. I just can't stand cops. Okay, again, you're going to need to clarify a few things here. Are these poor migrant workers getting stopped and then cited, or officers seeing a violation of the law, stopping them, investigating, finding nothing of interest, and then writing them a warning? Because that's what I think is happening. That's what generally happens. Now, again, if those workers disproportionately have vehicle violations, they're going to get disproportionately pulled over. A lot of people will say, well, you're pulling me over because of this, because of that, and a good percentage of the time it's because I'm X, Y race. I have no idea what race you are before I get up to the window. I have no clue. Unless like I am sitting right next to you and I look over at your face, I have no clue what race you are. I have no idea, especially at night. I drove by, I was in my truck and I saw this woman out there doing the same thing, a parasite on, the, on society and I flipped her the bird. Ah, oh, yeah, that's the emotionally mature thing to do as a 50-odd-year-old man. Flip off a cop, aka a random person that you've never even met before, the bird. Because, what, a cab? I, why? I mean, I get that you believe that those cops are, are parasites and whatever else, but they're people, Cody. They're human beings. 
And, and I get people don't understand that. I get people think that we are just the job and that's it. We're human beings. <laughs> bold as brass right there. She was looking at me. She was coming back to her car. I looked at her and I just something an evilness came over me. That's not evilness, Cody. That's a lack of self-restraint. You know how many times I've seen somebody wearing something I don't like in public, like an ACAB shirt or whatever else. How many times have I given those individuals the finger in public? Zero. Never. I've never done that because it's called self-control, Cody. It's not difficult. I promise. I'm sorry. I sinned. I'm not perfect. Fair enough. Nobody is. Nobody is. Nobody's nobody's perfect. Even right now. I'm 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 getting I'm getting uptight, getting aggressive. Very upset. Very upset, man. I don't I don't need to be. Hey, calm down. Calm down. And I flipped her the bird. A good one. Okay, but yeah, that okay, you so you say doing something like that is a sin. But then in this next sentence, you don't seem remorseful about it <laughs> at all. If you believe what you did is a sin and then have like zero repentance for it, then there's no point in identifying it as a sin. It's weighing on your soul about as much as a grain of sand in your pocket. Eye contact. Well, she didn't like that. And she jumped in her car and followed behind me and just turn for turn, followed me for two miles, like inches off my bumper, just waiting, you know, just trying to provoke me. You know, and if a cop follows you long enough, they're going to find some reason to pull you over. To be fair, that, that is kind of annoying. I mean, granted, you have freedom of speech. You can flip off whoever you want to flip off. But in my experience, people that interact that way with cops generally have something else going on. One of the first times I was ever flipped off by anybody while I was working patrol, I decided, hey, you know what? That's kind of interesting. Um, <laughs> I want to follow and see what's going on. And while I was running the plate, turns out the plate attached had like 25 different warrants out of four different agencies. That's flipping somebody off randomly is just a regular behavior to exhibit anywhere, especially to a stranger that you've never even met before. But 60, it's the uniform he's flipping off, not the person. Yeah, but guess who's wearing the uniform? A person. We are losing the sense of individualism in society and leaning in towards tribalism like this, and it's headed nowhere good. I can assure you of that. And she was right on my bumper, and there was a light turned red, and I, it was one of those. It was it was really difficult, you know. It was like it could have went either way. But she was so close, I thought she was going to rear end me. I mean, she was just feet off my bumper. I went through the red light. Of course, she puts the lights on, comes out, and she gives me a t and she she pulls me over. So I pull into the parking lot, and like, okay, I'm I'm not going to get involved with this. There's there's this is this is a no win situation. I'm I did what I did. I do it again. I want her to know. I want her to know and law enforcement that there are predatory like that, that are road pirates, that are scum of the earth. I want them to know that the public despises them. I hope more people do that. It was worth taking the ticket for it. Okay, yeah, again, you're, I'm not hearing a lot of remorse here. It, it, not exactly repentant, I would say. Nobody is without sin, right? No one is. But if you're going to invoke that it is a sin, then you might want to actually turn away from it and not just say, I do it again. That's not the point in identifying something as a sin. <sighs> I turned on my phone. I set it on the, the dash. She came up to the window and I said, I just want you to know I'm recording this. And she says, well, it's a free country. You have every right. And I didn't say a word. I passed over my license, registration, all that stuff. She went back, ran all my plates, all that, gave me tickets and off I went. You're asking the wrong dude. Uh, about law enforcement. Um, I could not support it. I could not support that decision. I do not like law enforcement. Okay, so I'm gonna stop it here. This is the part where Cody starts to just generalize law enforcement en masse, which is something I take issue with, especially with Cody as a self-proclaimed conservative, where an individualism is one of the highest held beliefs and tenets, and that taking responsibility for your actions and placing blame where blame is due against the singular person, not the whole, is the whole point. There are good cops and there are bad cops. Not all cops are bad, not all cops are good. It is the individual that wears the badge that makes them so, not the badge itself. Um, I don't, they become abusive. They're antagonistic against people. They have the mentality, not all, not all. Not all, he refuted your point. Yeah, except he doubles back on it like minutes later. Don't, don't worry, we'll get there but most. The sheriffs, there are exceptions. My local sheriffs 
I've never had a problem with. I will, I will take this case by case. I know one of the sheriff's officers is, one of my, is a subscriber. He drops by the house here peri periodically. I have no issue with them because they're on the same page with us. They understand. They're not out writing people tickets. They're not being a parasite on society. Okay, again, how do you know that? Did you make an open records request for your sheriff's department and find their stop data? Again, these claims he's making are purely anecdotal, which annoys me because then he uses it to back up the rest of his argumentation. Just saying, oh, I see the city cops stop people more than the deputies do. Therefore, city cops are bad. That's a poor argument at best and completely disingenuous at worst. Our local sheriff is a good dude. He came out publicly and said, I don't care what the feds do, whatever laws they pass or the state, we will not enforce anything that's unconstitutional, which means any sort of, a, of a gun bans or coming to people's house or confiscation, he will not support it. So I can get behind that. Also, as a conservative, you should probably know that sheriffs as elected officials are gonna tell you what you wanna hear. And here comes my own logical fallacy, the no true Scotsman fallacy, okay? No true officer that is upholding the Constitution would comply with an order to begin seizing people's guns. My job as an officer is first and foremost to protect people's civil liberties, period. I would quit tomorrow if that order came down to begin seizing people's guns randomly for zero reason whatsoever. And I know a majority of the officers that I work with would do the same. Again, not all officers think like that, but the majority of the ones I know do. If you're talking about the sheriff in a, in a rural department that has these morals and standards that are part of the community and not parasites and pieces of garbage, then maybe, maybe. But, but that's going to be on a case-by-case -case situation because not all sheriffs are good either. So I don't like cops and I, don't, I would not recommend you get involved with them. Um, okay, again, we're heading off into a tangent about making generalizations about cops. This is, you know, and they say, you know, that, well, there's, you know, there's some good cops in, in, in the department. You, you, you know, you can't paint everyone with a broad brush. Yes, I can. Bro, <laughs> what? I, I can't defend you. <laughs> you saying that just absolutely negates your whole point before about saying case by case basis and not all cops. What? What? Because you know, if you're in law enforcement, if you're in a large department, you know that there's bad apples in there. You know that there are people, there are cops in there that are abusing people, that are taking advantage of people, that are power tripping, that are just making li people's lives miserable. And the fact that you stand by there and you still stand behind that blue line and you work there and take that paycheck and you don't come out publicly and you don't condemn this action, then you're complicit. Okay, no, Cody, I don't just stand there. You are making another gross generalization based off of nothing concrete. Are there people in departments in the country who act complicitly with people that are like that? Those malicious officers? Yeah, of course. But then that's just throwing the baby out with the bathwater. If one department does it, then I guess all departments do. It, it's a useless claim. Also, come out publicly for what? A cop writing people a lot of tickets for what I would personally consider dumb? Why? If that cop likes to write a million citations, that's their prerogative. That's not illegal, not what I would do, but it's not illegal, nor unethical. Now, do I think it's dumb? Yeah, but I would like to talk to them first, say like, hey man, why are you writing all these people citations? They probably don't need them. Having a conversation with them first is probably best. What is everyone's insistence about getting everyone fired? I, it, it's truly nasty stuff. It, and you don't you you throw away any good any goodness that you may have or your good motivation is gone and out the window in my opinion i can't support it good yep just negate people's intentions of their actions completely yep i'm really glad we as a society deem that a moral thing to do Th great oh you brought me a, a nice cake for my birthday that's so thoughtful or is it poisonous because you want me to die we're gonna be all suspicious of each other and no one can trust each other ever. It, it's stupid, it's stupid. <sighs> so what's the solution? Should we just have anarchy? It would. We have it now. Brother, what? Anarchy? We may have a pretty jacked up society, but it's definitely not anarchy. Uh, tell me, how do you feel when a cop pulls up behind you? Do you feel safe? Do you feel, man, I sure am glad that cop is behind me. I sure am glad he's sitting there on the side of the road. I'm sure, I, I feel so much better now. I don't feel that way. My wife doesn't feel that way. Nobody I know feels that way. No, you feel tension. You feel 
fear. You know, you like, what, what's he going to do? Okay. And I get what you're trying to say here, Cody, but for my own policing methodology, I barely stop for 13 to 14 miles for the speed limit. Again, I don't know. Follow the rules of the law. And in most cases, you'll be fine. That it's not a very difficult thing to do. They plant. Oh, it's terrible. And I agree. Officers that plant drugs, fake evidence, violate people's rights are deplorable. Should go to jail, be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Absolutely. It's terrible. And well, I've said what I've said. Don't become a cop. Mm, too late. What's the solution? I'd rather, I'll, I'll take my own security. I'll take security into my own hand. The solution is simple. Mandatory concealed carry. Mandatory, mandatory concealed carry for all men at an age of whatever. Pick it. 21 and over. That you have to do it. You have to have it on you. Um, and that will take care of itself. Mandatory concealed carry? Mandatory as in government regulation that would need to be enforced? I wonder who they would put in place to enforce such laws. Perhaps a group of governmental workers, let's call them the law bros, they would be required to carry guns, handcuffs, tasers, and ensure that other people are doing what they're supposed to do and conceal carry. I, I feel like you straight further and further from the word conservative with each argument you provide, Cody. I'm all for constitutional carry, 100%. But again, you're talking about a governmental mandate. I just, the cognitive dissonance here. We got by a long time without predatory road pirates and revenue collectors and parasites, and we have to pay them for this. I pay your salary with my taxes. Bro, <laughs> I pay the same taxes. What are you talking about? It's always such a dumb argument. Oh, I, I, I pay your salary. I pay for taxes too. So technically I'm paying myself. <laughs> what are their salaries? Eighty hundred thousand dollars a year plus benefits? What? <laughs> I wish, dude. That'd be great. <laughs> oh my goodness. Early retirements? Sickening. And the fire department needs to be disbandled as well. <laughs> that is one hot take. I'll leave that to the FD to take care of. <laughs> Cody, I hate to say it, but when you say stuff like you can paint an entire group of people with the same brush and generalizing people to a fault with a good percentage of your arguments, it makes you sound like a leftist, as that's what they tend to do. I, I try not to be political or controversial on this channel, and generally I'd ignore a video like this, but something about this really got to me. I think... Partially, it was due to the fact that I held Cody in such a high regard when growing up, which makes his word seem to hit closer to home for me. Cody, if you see this video, I'd really like for you to reconsider some of your views on law enforcement. If you want, I'd be more than happy to talk with you about policing, 100%. And if not, then I guess we'll just have to disband the fire department. Also, I want to point out that I recognize that this video is coming out at a very sensitive time in this country with the Tyree Nichols case. At the time of recording, the body cam footage has not been released yet, so I don't have all the facts. If the cops have been proven to be malicious in what they did, should absolutely be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law, 100%. As I said before, there are good cops and there are bad cops. I personally believe that there are more good than bad, but that the bad tends to outweigh the good sometimes, especially in the public's mind. Hopefully I can do my part in trying to change that. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And as always, remember our sole objectives, stop the killing, stop the dying. I'll see y'all later.